Yeah, for those of you who are, who are not from MIP Frontiers, my name is Antonio Ramirez. Uh, I'm a PhD student on the Music Technology Group of Universidad Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. My supervisors are Xavier Serra and Frederick Font. And I did my secondment at Native Instruments. Uh, my work is entitled Automatic Characterization and Generation of Music Loops and Instrument Samples for electronic music production. So I'll start by giving a brief outline of the of this talk. I'll start by introducing a bit electronic music production and uh, then I will go to motivation, uh, explain the objectives of my thesis and end with the contributions. So Electronic music production is very accessible to everyone that has a computer nowadays. So you can even freely obtain a, a digital audio workstation, some software that is, allows you to, to make music, even without having much um, music theory knowledge or, or music making knowledge. Um, one of the core components in electronic music that also allows these uh, allow not having a necessity for music theory is the use of sampling that it's basically taking already pre-recorded audio material and use it again on your and use it on your productions on your music and this practice is very fundamental to electronic music and it has been there since since its origins uh, here we can see a picture of dj shadow uh, classic hip hop or trip hop producer that is basically taking a piece of a record, probably a drum break and putting it on his uh, MPC for it to be chopped, rearranged and resequenced into a different piece. These samples can be used as building blocks from, for making music pieces as we can see easily in this picture where different elements are repeated or loop to, to create a new piece. And yeah, some music makers also create their own building blocks by recording and sequencing existing audio like we were seeing in DJ Shadow uh, to record synthesizers and other instruments. Um, these music makers and sound designers, they can share their building blocks. They can do it for free on a, or in a commercial manner. For example, they can sell it as sample packs or individual sounds in a service like Loop Cloud, or alternative, there is the platform free sound, which I've been working more closely with, that um, provides Creative Commons uh, reusable audio material that music makers can, can reuse. Um, these large scale databases of audio, they offer huge collections of these building blocks to be worked on. And sometimes in a more organized manner, as we can see on loop cloud, and sometimes in a less structured way like free sound. And a very common thing is for music makers to collect uh, these building blocks and getting super big collections of, of samples that at the end might be not manageable. Our research will focus on, on two specific types of, of sample material. So, short isolated fragments and loops and phrases. This is a typology of uh, the sample material in electronic dance music. Uh, it also contains larger elements like, for example, a cappella and transform material, which is any of these three uh, sample material that is then transformed in another one. Um, yeah, we'll focus again, as I was saying, in, short, in loops and one shots. Uh, a definition of loops is that they are audio excerpts, usually of short duration, that can be, be played repeatedly in a seamless manner. So you can take a loop, you can put, uh, you can duplicate it, and there should not be any. You shouldn't be able to notice a transition, so it can be repeated for a long time. Uh, on the other hand, one short one shot sounds are short instrumental sounds which are not loops. For example, a drum sound, uh, a sound from a violin that on, on normally only contains one note and is then rearranged. So as we will see, navigation through these loop, loop and one-shot databases is pretty hard. So when you have a 
peak collection, it will be hard to navigate it. And the existing ways to navigate these databases rely on textual search and hierarchical directories, which is obviously not an easy way to, to, navigate, to navigate them. And that this difficulty in navigation might lead to an interruption in the creative process, which is always not desirable. So for example, here we can see how the samples are organized in three different digital audio workstations. So on the left, we have Ableton. Here is Machina and on the right, Fruity Loops. For example, Fruity Loops, uh, the factory library, so the sounds that come with, with, uh, with the digital, with the DAW, um, they organize the, the sounds through instrument, but as soon as you have a, a sample a sample pack that you obtain from somewhere, which is more like the case that we see here in my collection of samples, uh, sometimes inside each sample pack, so a collection of sounds with a, with a specific theme, uh, it might um, have like the different instruments in separate folders, but at the end, for example, we can have an iHat loop that really sounds like an iHat loop from another library. And maybe when you're navigating, you would prefer to search by similarity than actually searching iHat and listening to er through everything that you might have. Uh, here it's, I think, Avid, which also for follows the same structure. On online collections, uh, for example, sounds.com is developed by native instruments. As these are normally from uh, with uh, are bigger than the collections you have in your own computer. Uh, the sounds are annotated in terms of whether they are uh, their character, their timbre, so some kind of timbre, the instrument, and if they are a loop or a one shot, their BPM and key, and you can search it also through genres or by keywords. On Splice, here it's another very commonly used platform. You get more this kind of uh, sample packs from artists curated by them or with the sounds they use. And here again, you, you might have tags to search through the sounds, but for example, if you download them, it's going to be a folder with all the sounds inside, maybe categorized, but still be a contained environment. Here again, Loop Cloud, where you can search also by tags and by genres. And key Looper Man is also a database of loops, uh, which is freely available. So people can upload and uh, download for free and relies on, again on key and tempo and keywords and genre and category, which is an instrument. Finally, on free sound, sorry, the, the search is more motivated by these tags and textual descriptions of the sounds. Uh, and normally you would search for a keyword to find the sound that you would like. Sometimes the descriptions contain, for example, information about the BPM, but as the descriptions are given by users without any common, uh, without any enforced uh, policy for tagging, uh, it's it's not as easy to find sounds. However, FreeSound provides, an, sorry, provides an API that allows to easily search for content-based uh, searching. Uh, in this paper by Anderson and Nies, difficult navigation is identified as the worst creativity killer. So when artists says, because you usually have to browse really huge libraries that most of the time are not really well organized, I easily get lost. I always have to scroll back and forth and through ruins the flow when you're playing. Sometimes when you don't know what you're looking for and you're just going randomly through your samples, that might be helpful, but most of the times I have something in mind that I'm looking for and I'm just going through all these sound files and I'm just waiting for the sound which I had in mind to suddenly appear or what comes closest to what I had in mind. So this is to say that sometimes also the, the music makers knows what they are looking for and maybe they can uh, describe it if they have any semantic uh, feature to, 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 to describe it. Um, so the objectives of, of my PhD were to improve the navigation in large and structured collections of electronic music production building blocks through two main methodologies. The first one is characterization that will focus on instrument and instrumentation classification of these building blocks, so of loops and one shots. 
and generation. So generating building blocks from these high level characteristics. Uh, so here's an overview of my contributions. I'll divide them into data set, instrument classification and instrumentation, generation and libraries. So I'll start by the data set that we did. Uh, the existing research on loops either uses small collections of commercial loops, which at the end are not distributable in between researchers legally, and freely available and distributable, but weakly annotated loops. So loops that do not have much information uh, annotated. We propose a novel data set of loops from Freesound, where we have annotations by experts in instruments, tempo, key, and genres. It's freely distributable and available as it's under a Creative Commons license and uses sounds from Freesound. And it's large scale. So we have 3000 uh, loops that are strongly annotated. And we believe it can enable uh, reproducible research using loops. Uh, finally, we also do a benchmarking on key and tempo estimation and evaluate loop separating algorithms when separating the different loops when automatically building a track using these loops. This was presented at Izmir in 2020. Uh, together with the data set, we proposed the loop annotation server service that is open source. Uh, it's public for further annotation, so anyone can annotate the sounds. And we are automatically have suggestions of key BPM and genre coming from the, the tags. Um, yeah. Regarding instrument classifications, uh, we started by identifying instruments, uh, the instrument in a sample with effects applied. So to create a baseline for this, we took the NSYNC data set, which Hagen is also used, which is basically a data set with uh, recorded sounds from uh, from soft synthesizers for different instruments, which is annotated. We use the state-of-the-art algorithm at the time, the one proposed by Jordi Pons, on a data set augmented with audio effects like uh, reverb, uh, distortion, overdrive, and these different kinds of uh, effects that are commonly used in music production. And we basically identified that accuracy of the algorithm when classifying uh, sounds that have uh, the audio effects applied was greatly decreased. And we also experimented with that augmentation for data, for this data augmentation with effects for a more robust classification, which works for, for some cases. And it was, this was presented in DAFX in 2019, to, yeah, 2019. Then on to instrumentation classi classification, which is a fairly similar task to uh, we take the instrumentation annotations from the free sound loop data set and our aim is to automatically classify this instrumentation. So instead of actually classifying the instruments, we classify the role the, the loop might take in a finished musical piece, which sometimes might be more appropriate for, for a search. So we have percussion, bass, chords, melody, sound effects and voice. For example, let's say we have a guitar and it can both do melody or chords, right? But if we are in a music making context, if you already have a melody and no harmony to back it up, we'll probably want to look for chords and not melody. We set a baseline on this classification using the harmonic CNN, which was proposed by means one. And yeah, as we will see later, this uh, network was not uh, the most appropriate for, for, this, for this kind of data. And we were able also to identify issues when classifying multi-label data because the free sound loop data set has more single label uh, loops. So loops which only one of these classes than multi-labeled loops. And yeah, this was presented in, in the joint conference on AI and music creativity last year. Uh, then we, I worked with uh, Jake Drisdale on this paper that unfortunately was rejected for Izmir, but we are reworking on it for uh, submitting it to a journal. So 
we take all the single label loops from, from the free sound loop data set. We apply the data augmentation from uh, similar to the paper presented in DAFX to, to basically generate equal amounts of single label loops for each class. And to create synthetic multi-label data, we generate new loops by overlapping the single label, uh, the single label ones. We experiment with, with more appropriate architectures uh, that prove to be to, to work better, like a simple VGG or the Charlie Pons proposed VGG with uh, vertical filters. And we experiment with different pooling operators, like the global max pooling and also auto pool. Auto pool uh, provide a very nice result. And uh, of the way it's done, it allows to have a more small uh, scale representation of the activations through time. So we are tra train the model into four bar loops and it's able to give a prediction for each bar. We then evaluate the, this train model to, for two tasks. So the loop instrumentation classification and, uh, and for structure analysis as well, as I'll show you. We are able to achieve state-of-the-art on instrument classification with a very uh, nice performance. And for the structure analysis of electronic music pieces, we achieve a similar performance to non-negative tensor factorization and non-negative matrix factorization deconvolution approaches, as you can see here on the right. Um, the biggest thing is that um, unlike these two approaches, we don't, uh, our approach is fairly quick and it doesn't rely on repetition uh, of the same loop throughout the track. So one of the things we are doing is constructing a small data set of actually electronic music pieces to also evaluate these algorithms on. But here for now, there is an example of uh, an omnit track where these are the predictions by the best performing model. We can see in the beginning, there's a baseline here that goes throughout the track and it's clearly identified the drums uh, whenever they appear, we have more positive results. And you can see like a small arpeggio here that goes throughout the track and is identified as a chord. Uh, yeah, I think this uh, can be very helpful for uh, helping DJ seeing the structure of a, of a track when they are playing. You can also copy a strong a song structure just by providing the loops and replicate the same structure. And yeah, and furthermore, the inference time is fairly quick compared to these two approaches. Now on to the generation of percussion. Uh, I'll start representing uh, the data set we also did, which is the free sound one shot percussive sound. So again, creative common sounds uh, that can be remixed and distributed. We've collected them from free sound and then we had a manual verifying stage where we saw that they were all one shots. And for training the, the progression generation model, we also collected 5,000 uh, kick drum samples from personal collections. So in this case, commercial uh, data. Uh, what we did, we extracted the envelope and these audio comments, timbrel features that also Javier talked about, hardness, depth, brightness, roughness, boominess, warmth, and sharpness. And we trained the wave unit to find uh, how to map these features to a waveform. So as input, we give the features and uh, the loss that we first used was the reconstruction loss. Um, between the generated and the real data that uh, gave these features. The wave unit allows for a quicker generation than the previously proposed approaches. Um, these features, uh, the other common features allow for an intuitive control of the generation process, which is highly semantic. And I believe that music makers can relate to. And you're able to achieve a high fe feature coherence between the features you given in the input and the audio generated and the features obtained by analyzing the, the audio generated at the output. And we also evaluated the different loss functions through a listening test. We then um, 
let's say upgraded this work to generating loops instead of single drum sounds. Um, we took the previous inputs for each drum sound for the kick, snare, and hi hat. We also took the onset detections from the automatic drum transcription system from Carl Southall. Sorry, I didn't say this was presented in NICASP in 2019, I guess, 2020 maybe. Uh, and this one in 2021. Uh, yeah, so basically we take the HPCP as well for describing the tonal contact because we use the Looperman data set, which is a, it focuses a lot on a specific genre, which is trap and the, the bass on the drum it normally is very tonal. Uh, so basically we use the same architecture and we can generate a, a drum loop. Uh, the system is able to reconstruct the loops from the these onset detection functions, which are, all, as you can see, they are also easily mappable from MIDI to, to, to these Gaussian curves. Uh, we saw that we can still maintain a high feature coherence and we evaluate the synthesis of uh, several perceptual losses as well, now with fresh audio distance. And yeah, one uh, cool thing about this system is that it allows for reconstructing a drum pattern of one loop uh, and put the timber of uh, another loop. So for example, if we give them onset detection function curves from uh, loop A and the timbral features by loop B, we will have the rhythm of loop A with the timbre of loop B. Uh, yeah, so on the native instrument secondment, I, I've been working on mostly improving the quality of the generated sounds. I use the network very similar to the one propo proposed by Javier Nistal. Uh, I think he used, he used the progressive growing guns, and in this case, we use the style gun. Unfortunately, we are still not on the fresh air audio distance that uh, Javier can achieve, but we are currently working on learning the latent space directions through both an uh, and supervised approach and supervised approach. So this is basically the work in progress. And if for the supervised approach, we are experimenting with CEFA, which is closed form factorization of the latent space and the supervised approach we will have to test after. Uh, besides this, I also contributed with some libraries, uh, the TIV lib, which allows to, to, to get some tonal content description using these tonal interval vectors, which is implemented in Pure Data and Python, and the Freestyle Juice API. Juice is a library that allows the, gen, the creating uh, VST plugins and basically allows the access of any plugin to, to free sound and to use the data. So as a summary, I propose six papers. Uh, two are still to be submitted and six have been accepted by peer reviewing. Two open source Creative Commons data sets and all the our research had a strong focus on reproducibility of the experiments and you can find the code on my GitHub. Thank you very much.